Thank you, John. And thank you very much, everybody, for coming and uh, showing your support for arrest. As most of you here are well aware, uh, there is no measurable public health risk from Victoria's natural ocean treatment and discharge through the two deep sea outfalls at Macaulay and Clover Points. That has been well studied, and myself and five other public health physicians have published our best judgment on this issue. It is clear to many people that the decision to order the CRD to plan for treatment in June 2006 by the Ministry of Environment was a political decision. It is worth reviewing why the Premier might have decided to ask the Environment Minister to do this when the scientific evidence uh, for need was so weak. And I offer the following. Firstly, the Campbell government wanted to take over the NDP's environmental agenda prior to the election in 2009. Secondly, they wanted to be seen as doing the right thing when the world comes to BC for the 2010 Olympics. Thirdly, there was much lobbying by environmental groups, the Georgia Strait Alliance, the Victoria Sewage Alliance, Poop, uh, people opposed to ocean pollution, in, and Mr. Floaty, and EcoJustice, who requested the Ministry of Environment to see if the ocean floor was contaminated, sufficient to be designated a contaminated site. In addition, the Seattle Post intelligence columnist Joel Connolly had written about the issue for about 20 years. Uh, um, I should mention now, even though the paper has gone out of business, he still writes a column on the web edition. Uh, but he hasn't written about this issue for a while, I checked it. <laughs> um, the order to treat came unexpectedly after the uncertain conclusions in the CTAC report that was unable to indicate what the benefit would be to public health and the environment to build land-based sewage treatment plants. The CRD, however, decided they wanted to build secondary treatment or better plants. It was their decision in June 2006. So where are we at today? The CRD spent 10 million in 2008 and budgeted 12 million in 2009. I'm not sure whether they spent it all yet to plan for treatment. The plans are by no means firm. The sites for treatment plants have not been committed. No definite site for the treatment of the toxic sludge has been identified. The piping required has not been clearly identified, but defined. Nevertheless, a plan to amend the liquid waste management plan has been submitted to the Minister for approval and budget estimates have been created in order to try and obtain commitments of one-third federal, uh, one-third provincial funding. The CRD has even contracted with a political lobbyist in Ottawa to help them get the one-third federal funding that might be forthcoming. That's probably why Keith got to talk to them. Um, Today, those of us who have been following this issue closely are acutely aware that the public perception is that this is a done deal, that we are going to have secondary treatment plants in Victoria. There is a belief that this is the right thing to do, to use 19th century technology plus some expensive add-ons rather than a 21st century solution, to continue to benefit from the unique ocean char characteristics of Victoria that treats Victoria sewage naturally with a minimum effect on the marine environment and minimal effect on the land and the global environment. This is why arrest has been formed. I'm greatly concerned that the greater Victoria public is being misled by information put out by the CRD in press releases. Based on CRD reports, building the proposed land-based treatment plants will produce 15,516 tonnes of carbon dioxide uh, greenhouse gases during the, op during the building of these plants and in addition 7,900 uh, tonnes per year will be produced each year and if you, if, you, if you multiply that by 50 for the 50 year lifespan that comes to 400,000 tonnes of carbon dioxide. Uh, the press release just mentioned that you could claim an offsetting 18,500 tonnes of offsets a year. That, that's what got me asking questions of the CRD. Where did they get that number from? And then they showed me this report, which, uh, which had, it was really sort of hidden in the table. The offsets will not result in a reduction of the original carbon footprint that is created. We are all aware how vital it is to take all measures to protect the global environment. There needs to be a review of the impact of building and operating the proposed land-based treatment plants on the, on the global land and the marine environments. This review should then be compared with the existing highly effective natural treatment of Victoria's liquid waste. I've, I've made this suggestion to the CRD quite a number of times, but I'm afraid I've, it falls on deaf ears. The CRD has not prepared that they indicate, uh, prepared to do this. 
There are deceptions occurring in the claims for annual costs to householders. These are being lowballed. We can reasonably assume that the project is going to cost at least a billion and add, I say, 500 to 1,000, uh, either to your household tax bill or to the sewer charge levied by your municipality. Incidentally, uh, Victoria is now going to be putting it all onto the water use. The, the sewer charge is now going to be onto water use in Victoria. Um, in addition, the CRD is promoting resource recovery, 5.7 million by 2030, against an operating cost of 19.8 million a year. But that's a less than one third of the operating costs. It therefore loses money annually and will have to be subsidized by property taxation. Another deception is that the report does not acknowledge that in order to have resource recovery, there has to be a 25% increase in the capital costs. And that's all in CRD reports. I'm optimistic that there will be an opportunity in the future to rethink the decision to impose land-based sewage treatment on Victoria's taxpayers with no definable benefit to public health or the environment. After the upcoming Winter Olympics next month and a new provincial budget in March, the provincial government may well have second thoughts. In November 2011, there will be municipal elections again. At the present pace of planning, which I'm glad to say is pretty slow, uh, it seems likely that by the time these municipal elections come around, there will be no definite contracts will have been let to build the plants. I and members of ARREST are committed to continue to put these arguments in front of the C CRD and other levels of government. However, we need to raise some funds to get the message out publicly. The media will give some coverage, but do not publish many submissions that have been made. I urge you, therefore, to help us by supporting ARREST and by continuing to assist us in any way you can to engage the public more on this issue. Thank you very much.